Well, hi everyone, Chef Ron here. We are just about ready to start this episode of the Chef Ron Lock Show. We're going to be doing a barbecue episode. So it's going to be some inside and some outside. I'm a little bit casual today because we're going to be outside for a good part of it. And we have someone dropping in to do our ingredient presentation that a lot of you might know. A lot of you might know. This person used to have a cooking show a couple years ago. And uh, you might enjoy what you're going to see here, bringing a little nostalgia to the Chef Ron Lock Show. So, with that, i got to get going, but we're going to bring you the three E's that we always do. A little bit of entertainment, a little bit of education, and a little bit of enlightenment. So let me get on and start heating up this kitchen, and let's get on with the Chef Ron Lock Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guest, ingredient presenter. Howdy, y'all. It's Chuck, your favorite cooking cowboy. Yippee, I go! <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, well, well. I have returned like the phoenix from the ashes. <laughs> I don't know, some of you all there, there might know who I am. Now I used to have a cooking show about two, three years ago. Now I don't know legally wise if I can say the name of the cooking show, so I'm going to do it this way. It was a show about cowboys, chuck wagons, and cooking. It was three C's there. And uh, you all know if you've seen it what I'm talking about. And I did that show. I did that show for the first season, and then Chef Ron Locke came in and hosted his own part of it with the name after that. So, but it was still all about cowboys, chuck wagons, and cooking. <laughs> so anyway, so I am back, like the phoenix from the ashes here. I, I did my last show this past summer, this past spring. I should say, in two, actually in 2013, I think it was June of 2013 was the last airing of an original <laughs> episode on that show, And uh, but I haven't been in this regalia here for a couple years, and it uh, feels good to come back, feels good to come back. One of the characters here on the Chef Ron Locke show, and uh, I may be around here for a little bit, I may be the fifth wheel in the character row here. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm just kind of filling in today to help out here on the barbecue episode that we're all going to do for y'all out there. We got a great barbecue recipe that I, we're doing. Let me tell you what that's going to be. We're doing barbecue, bacon, cheddar, chicken breast. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Let me tell you, it's some good stuff. We got some good ingredients that are going into it as well. But anyway, so y'all, I've been away for a while. People have been probably wondering where has the chuck wagon cooking cowboy guy gone, right? Well, like I said, I, I, I took a break. I took a hiatus in, uh, in the uh, summer of June, summer of uh, 2013, 2013. I'm nervous up here. <laughs> I haven't been in front of a camera for a while. I have not been in front of a camera. This is my first time here in front of a camera since I did my last episode. And uh, so you have to forgive me a little bit. If I stumble a little bit, work with me here. And uh, hopefully we'll all, uh, we'll all do better for it. But anyway, so I haven't been in front of a camera or anything then. I took a little break and uh, I just was been moseying around trying, I guess, to find myself. 
I've been doing some cooking on my own, doing some uh, cookbook writing on my own, and uh, we're just having a little fun and just enjoying life. Just enjoying life because that's what cowboys do when there ain't nothing else to do. You just kick back and relax and cook a little bit too. So anyway, so that's what we're all been up to. And uh, so Chef Ron had an idea to go ahead and ask if I'd come out of retirement and uh, do one of his shows for him. So it was time to put on the apron, the hat, and mosey on over here and do this uh, barbecue episode for him. And uh, so it's great to see uh, y'all out there. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I may be back for a couple more episodes. Uh, we'll see. You may not have seen the last of me yet. Again, the phoenix has arisen. <laughs> All right. Listen, let's go ahead and get on with our recipe. And first of all, what are we going to be making for y'all today, right? Well, y'all, we're going to be making for you some fantastic barbecue, bacon, cheddar, chicken breasts. Oh, my, that is a yippee good And let me tell you, it is a yippee good And uh, it, it's just, it, I've had this before. It's wonderful. You're going to love this recipe. You're going to like what is going into this recipe as well. And so anyway, I'm not too much for words these days. I'm like trying to get back into all this again. So I just wanted to, like I said, come back here and help uh, Chef Ron out a bit here. Here I am, making my presence and uh, coming out of retirement a little bit. So let's go ahead now and shift from me to the recipes. Let's go to the ingredient roundup here that we have. And let's tell you what's going into this, all right? All right, well, we first got here two strips of premium bacon, and we got two nice, plump, juicy, skinless, boneless chicken breasts that have been washed and patted dry, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and put on some fantastic sharp cheddar cheese. Get yourself a block of eight ounces of cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, and just cut that up into uh, into uh, oh I don't know little little strips like we have right here. You see that? You just put those in little strips, and uh, we get about maybe six to eight of those, and uh, you'll be good to go with that. All right, get them thin now. Get them thin too. All right, then next here we've got one. Now this these next three ingredients are going to be for this kicking, kicking sauce we're going to be making for you, or Chef Ron's going to be making for you. I'm just talking about it here. But it is called a barbecue peach sauce. Barbecue peach sauce, or peach barbecue sauce. <laughs> Something like that. He'll tell you what it is. He'll tell you what it is. It's, that's what it, okay, I, I'm getting the cue card over here. It's a peach barbecue sauce is what it is. Barbecue peach sauce. <laughs> uh, you know, six of one, half of another. It's a barbecue peach sauce. All right, all right. I got it, I got it, I got it. I said, work with me here, people. I'm just getting back in front of the camera again. I'm a little camera shy. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Now, cut, cut the, cut the cook. cowboy here some slap. Come on. <laughs> All right. Barbecue peach sauce is what we're doing. A spicy barbecue peach sauce. And now we're putting in this, first of all, we got a third cup of peach preserves. If you've never had peach preserves standalone, you need to try those. Those are just dynamite. They are good, good, good. How good? Yippee I good! <laughs> and then we got here, we got some barbecue sauce. Now you can use your own barbecue sauce from scratch or you can use a store-bought barbecue sauce. Get it a smoky flavor if you will and uh, we're going to use a half a cup of that. All right. Lastly, we got here some, oh, Almost spilled that. Oh my lord! <laughs> we got <laughs> we got 
we got, we're having fun here on the Chef Ron Lock. Chef Ron Lock is going to choke me here when he comes back out. I'm telling you, I'm so sorry. We have here, this is hot sauce. Let me tell you, he just jumped right out of my hand. Now we've got here some Louisiana hot sauce right here. And you're going to want to maybe add about a sixteenth of a teaspoon, which equates to about eight drops of it. Chef Ron's going to show you how to mix this all up here in just a bit. All right, so you know what? I'm causing a lot of havoc here on this on this on this episode here already. I better get off of here before, uh, like I said, Chef Ron strangles me. So I don't know if you'll ever see me on here again or not. I don't think I did so well for my first go. I don't know. But anyway, so that's it. We're having a good time. Chef Ron's going to be right back, and he's going to show you how to get these chicken breasts wrapped up in this wonderful bacon and he's going to show you how to make this wonderful sauce and then he's going to go outside and show you how to do this barbecue style. So, from me to you, this is Chuck, your favorite cooking cowboy, saying to y'all, happy trails until we meet again. See ya. Well, hi everyone, Chef Ron Locke here. How's everyone doing out there today? <laughs> All right. Woo now there is a charged up audience waiting, just waiting to check out another episode of the Chef Ron Locke Show. We have a great episode for you, by the way. Listen, did you enjoy Chuck's little appearance there? Yeah, you know, I, if you followed my career at all, you know that character has been with me in a previous cooking show, uh, the Chuck Wagon Cowboy, if any of you have seen that or not. And uh, so, yeah, it, you know, and so I, I, I left that about a year ago, and then I started this current cooking show that I'm doing because I didn't want to be tied into a certain character. I wanted to just be me and then bring some characters out in the beginning. So, you know, if you've seen this show enough, you know what my what I'm trying to do here and what the premise of the show is. You know, I always say it's like Saturday Night Live meets the Food Network. And so anyway, so we have a little fun on here with those characters. But, you know, so I thought I'd bring Chuck back in and uh, have him in on some special episodes. And you probably will see him mainly on the barbecuing episodes that I do. I'll probably have them on mostly for that. Uh, once in a while for maybe something else that's a little special too, but you know, he's not one of the current regulars that I'm doing each week. Um, but we'll bring him out once in a blue moon because I've had a lot of people ask me about what happened and where, what, you know, why don't you do that anymore and this and that and the other. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of put a little nostalgia into the new show here. Kind of bring, bridge the old and the new together, so to speak. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. His little stint on here, his uh, ingredient presentation and such, and uh, it's always fun to go ahead and do that. So anyway, but here we are right now, and you know what? Summer is coming. Summer is only, what, three weeks away, four weeks away? Did you guys have a great Memorial Day, by the way? Yeah? Did you, did you, did you guys do any barbecuing at all? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah, you? Yeah, you did. Okay. All right. Good, good. You know... I know it's been a brutal winter for many of you out there this past winter. I'm from Wisconsin originally, and I we used to my family lived probably about maybe two miles from Lake Michigan. So I know about how brutal winters can be in the Midwest and the northern half of the country. And it's one of the reasons I moved down here to South Florida years ago. I just I couldn't take the winters. You know, I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. But for whatever reason that you folks that are up in those areas and, and having to deal with that cold, brutal winter. Man, I, I tell you, I feel for you. I really do. I still have family and such up there as well, so I know how bad it was. But guess what? We're almost over all that now. Well, I think we are. I think we had snow in Denver and some other places last week or a week or two weeks ago. But for the most part, I, fingers crossed, I hope we're all over that now and some really nice weather is coming our way. And I hope that you all had a great Memorial Day and that you were able to go ahead and fire up your grills and get things going with some Memorial Day plans because we have a fantastic grilling recipe that will put that grill of yours to work. And you know, Chuck just told you what we're making for you. We're going to be making for you some barbecue bacon cheddar chicken breast. Oh. Man, these are fantastic. You are definitely going to want to check this episode out 
and see what this is all about. We're going to be doing a little inside and outside and back inside again on this episode. So I'm going to be going back in and forth, flipping hats and all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to have a great time on this episode. And it's our little kickoff to summer that we're going to be doing for you here. So let's get started, right? All right, what's going on in these chicken breasts? Now, you can see right here on this plate, I went and got one ready for us here. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to take a chicken breast that I have right here, and we're going to go ahead and just wrap a couple pieces of bacon around it. It's pretty simple, and then secure it with some toothpicks. I'll, I'll walk you through that. I'm sure most of you probably know how to do that, but we'll just, for the, for the newbies out there, or ones that have really never barbecued or tried this, we're going to try to ease you into this recipe so you can get out there and give it a shot as well, all right? But we want to first make sure that our environment's nice and clean, our hands are also nice and clean. I just washed these hands right before we started the episode here, so we're all ready to go. If you notice, I'm a little more casual today because we're going and doing some barbecuing outside, so I wanted to get a little cooler. It's a little warm outside today, and also I like to be a little more freer if I'm moving around and doing things. So I don't have to roll sleeves up because they're already up. Well, let's get going, all right? All right. So you can see right here we've got our chicken breast. Now I'm going to take a piece of bacon that I've got on this plate over here and all you want to really do is take your bacon and you want to start, you can see here, you want to start your bacon and you can actually start it down here at the real end of the chicken breast. You see how I'm doing that right there just like that? And then all you're going to do is just roll this around. Stretch it out a little bit. You want to get this on nice and tight by the way, okay? And when you get to the end of this, and I see that we're all right there, go ahead and you want to get yourself a toothpick, all right? And where did the crew put my toothpicks? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> They're playing games with me. They are taking my stuff and playing games with me. My toothpicks. Now, I'm going to show you a little thing here. These toothpicks here, if you see this, I don't know if you can see this or not, they're immersed in a little little jar of water here. Now the reason I am using wet toothpicks, I think it's pretty obvious, when these toothpicks hit the fire, and what's going to happen is you're going to spit some fire up from the uh, coals that are going to be nice and red down on the bottom. When some of this grease hits that, when it hits that fire and it, that fire starts shooting up, you don't want your toothpicks to get on fire. You don't want them to catch fire because that would not be a good thing. So we want to keep them damp so that causes any fire issues at all out in the grills area at all. So that's what we do with that. A little tip from Chef Ron to you there, by the way. All right, so take one of your toothpicks, and then you're just going to secure it. Now, how I do this is I just go ahead and I, I, I secure it in to the breast like so. You see how I'm doing that? I think my hand just probably can cover that. I, I'm going in at an angle, just like that, kind of like how you would take a Kind of how you would take like a temperature if you were using a meat probe into some sort of like roast or something like that. That's how we're doing it here. All right. Now take your other piece of bacon and you're just going to continue. All right, with it, just like this. You see, just like that. And then we're just going to roll this around the breast again. Okay. Now you're going to have a little here. That's probably going to be left over. Now, what we can do here too is actually, I'm taking this back out, This because you can actually secure them both at the same time. You can use two toothpicks if you like, but you know, why, why waste why waste toothpicks and why waste the effort? Where you start and end your bacon, just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and, and, and connect those together like that. Okay, so then you're going to go to the end of your bacon that we have here. Just like that. Grab another toothpick. There we go. And just secure that in like so as well. And again, trying to show you on the camera here. So like that. Okay. Just you want to keep it secure. You just want to keep them secure. All right. We got our other one. And that's pretty much it when it comes to securing bacon around chicken breast like that. Very simple. Very easy. And like I said, the key elements here are just making sure that your, your, uh, your toothpicks are wet so you don't cause a fire hazard. And then just making sure you stretch that bacon around tightly because you don't want it to fall off. Things are going to shrink here as you get these on the grill and that bacon will tend to shrink around the chicken a little bit or it will you know, 
tend to get loose because the chicken will shrink. That's what I wanted to say. Anyway, so, all right, let me wash my hands here. Otherwise, I'm gonna feel like the robot from Lost in Space like this, you know? Because <laughs> I don't want to touch anything. All right, so now, now that we have our chicken breast here, now we want to go ahead and make the sauce, the barbecue sauce, that's going to be going on top of this as well. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, we're back, and now we're going to go ahead and put together our barbecue peach sauce that's going to be going on top of these fantastic bacon cheddar chicken breasts that we're going to be grilling out for here shortly. Let's go ahead and get started with that right now. Get yourself a small bowl here, small to medium sized bowl. Now we're going to take our ingredients, we're going to take our peach preserves, add those in, get all that out, like that, okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our barbecue sauce, like that. Alright, put that spoon in there. If you've seen one of my episodes with the spoon, somebody in the one of our audiences in the past, I was holding the spoon, they're like, let go of the spoon, because I have this tendency to like just carry the spoon around with me wherever I go. So that's why I'm putting it in there now so I don't start talking with it. Anyway, so what we and I the barbecue sauce that we're using here too, again, is a smoky barbecue sauce. Uh, you can go ahead and use you know any kind you like. The smoky flavor tends to go real well with the peach, so just a suggestion for you there if you, if you can find it. Uh, either store-bought or, you know, again, you can make your own too. But lastly, we're going to go ahead and use some Louisiana hot sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now a little goes a long way with this. I only, for me, for this recipe, I only use about eight drops total. Uh, if you like it hotter, add more. May I suggest to start with four drops. Stir it up, taste it, give yourself about 30 seconds and see if there's any after effects with the heat. Keep doing it till you get to where you want it, okay? But like I said, I add eight. I like mine about medium, you know. So that's about eight drops. So let's go ahead and add eight drops in here or about that. One, two, three, come on, four, come on, five, Six, seven, come on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, whoa, we got nine. Uh oh, watch out. The house is going to be on fire now. I feel like I'm on Sesame Street counting you to do on that show. <laughs> anyway, all right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and stir this up here. Just like that. You just want to get everything nicely mixed up. It takes about a second or two here. And what you're going, what you're going to want to do is. And we're just about ready here. Takes a second for that peach preserve to get mixed in with this barbecue. I'm going to take a little taste of this now. Mmm. 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 Mm. Actually, that ninth one, actually, I think it was actually even better. But fantastic. This is going to make a fantastic glaze on top of those chicken breasts, let me tell you. That's it. We're done. So guess what? We're going outside. So I'm going to switch hats here. And look, look. <laughs> I've had people tell me, what do you look like without your hat? Well, this is your one shot right here. All right. We're going to put on the barbecue hat. My grilling hat is what I call it. And we're going to go outside right now and do some fantastic grilling. Let's go. On the next episode of the Chef Ron Locke Show. So uh, anyway, I think really, I mean, everybody should like me. I mean, I know that probably sounds a little egotistical. Oh, be quiet out there. Oh, please. Oh, like, like you know what? Like, what? You, is, what's your self-esteem like? I can. Oh, that low? Okay, okay. Listen, Miss Caddy, don't get prissy with me. I mean, really. I mean, you know, come on. I mean. You've got to like yourself, okay? I know there's a fine line between being confident and being arrogant. And, you know, sometimes the butter just tends to want to just fall to the bottom and then you get that greasy river that lays on there and then you got to try to pat it up. The butter wrappers work really well. You leave them out for about maybe 20, 30 minutes before you use them. They get thawed down enough. It works fantastic. So that's what I always do when I'm coating my particular cooking vessels is these used butter wrapper. So, little tip from Chef Ron Lock to y'all out there. All right. <laughs> well
Well, welcome to the noisiest neighborhood this side of Uranus, or Uranus, however you want to say it. This is a noisy neighborhood, and I apologize for the noise you're going to be hearing in these uh, segments here, but uh, anyway, we're going to try to go ahead and do this grilling outside here. Here we are. This is my backyard, and behind me here we have our fire pit, and we're going to go ahead now and grill some fantastic, fantastic bacon cheddar chicken breast. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to walk over here. Now, one thing you want to do, one thing you want to do before you even get your grill going is go ahead and make sure that you lightly spray or coat your grill with butter or some oil or something because you don't want these to stick on it. All right, let's go ahead and put these on right now. Okay. What we're going to do here, I'm just going to bring the plate over here. We're just going to slide them on diagonally like so. Just like this. Okay. Just like that. All right. Now, you want to go ahead, if you see how I put those on, I like to do a diagonal. Now we're going to be cooking these seven minutes because they're thick breast and we've got the bacon around them. We're going to be cooking these for seven minutes and what we're going to do then is we're going to switch the angle so we can get a nice grilling underneath, okay? So they'll be seven minutes at one angle and you'll see we'll turn them around at another seven minutes to another angle and then we'll flip them and do the same thing. So the whole process takes about 25 minutes to do complete and uh, we'll walk you through all the steps of this but we're going to go ahead and let these get started and we'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to go ahead, we're at the seven minute point, we're going to switch direction on these breasts. We're not going to flip them yet, we're just going to go ahead and switch direction on these. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, just like that. Now we're just going to go ahead and let those cook and then we're going to flip those over here in another seven minutes. So let's go ahead and wait for those to get done and we'll be right back. Okay, now you can see how our chicken, we've turned it around here and it's getting nicely brown on the one side. After about 15 minutes, now we flipped it over and diagonal it a little bit. And now we're on the last part of our cooking phase. Now we're gonna cook this at this one diagonal for seven minutes. And then we'll go ahead and come back and turn it around. And then we're gonna go ahead and cook it for another seven minutes. And that's when we're gonna put our fantastic barbecue peach sauce and cheddar cheese on top of that. And mm, 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 that is going to be so good. So stick around and we got more for you. Just hang in there. Okay, we're all set to go ahead and make one last turn on our chicken breast. And we've got some fantastic barbecue peach sauce and some cheddar cheese that's going to be going on top of those to finish everything off. All right, let's go ahead and turn these and get some sauce on. Okay, here's our barbecue peach sauce. We're just going to go ahead and brush a little bit of that on our breast here, like this. Mmm, good stuff. Okay, and you can see I'm using the pastry brush to go ahead and get that sauce into the nooks and crannies of each of these chicken breasts. And with this kind of recipe, because you've got the bacon wrapped around them, it's really, really important to go ahead and use a pastry brush instead of, say, dolloping it with a spoon or something like that. It makes a lot of difference because you really want to get into all of the areas of each of these chicken breasts, just as you can see I'm doing right here. All right, and doesn't that look good? And now we've got the cheddar cheese that's going to be going on top. We're going to be using about three pieces on each of the chicken breast. And you'll see how that turns out here in just a second. Now. 
Now you can go ahead and use four if you like. We may do that here in a second. In fact, why not? There. Let's go ahead and do that. We got room. There we go. Just like that. Okay, now all you want to really do is just go ahead and drizzle the remaining sauce on top of our chicken breast. There we go, just like that. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and let this melt. We're going to leave it on there for about another seven minutes or so. And we're just going to go ahead and let it melt. Once it melts completely, then we're good to go. We're ready to plate this and do our final presentation. So, let's give it a few seconds here. Let's see what it finally looks like on the grill when it's done. And then we're going inside for some taste testing. Welcome back to the noisiest yard, this sign of Uranus, or Uranus, however you want to say it. It's getting pretty noisy out here, so we're going to go, and luckily we are just about done to wrap up outside. Go ahead and take a look at our final presentation on the grill of what our barbecue, bacon, and cheddar chicken breasts look like. Now don't those look good, I'm telling you, those are wonderful. We're going to go ahead right now and plate those, and when we come back, we're going to go ahead and show the final presentation and take a bite into one of those. In the meantime, we've got a fantastic mailbag that we're going to be doing for you. One lucky viewer out there wrote us, asking myself or one of our cast a question, and we're going to go ahead and answer that for you. We hold no bars here on mailbags, so let's see what this week's mailbag holds in store right now. Mailbag. Welcome to another edition of Mailbag. And this week's mailbag question comes to yours truly, Chef Ron Locke. And this week's question comes from Barbie M, who lives in Boston, Massachusetts. Now, Barbie asks Chef Ron, who were your early influences that got you interested in the culinary arts? That's a good question. All right, well, to start, my mom was a huge influence. She taught me a lot growing up. I cooked with my mom from the age, from probably age five till all the way till I went in the Air Force at 18. And then even after that, when I would come to visit, I'd help her out once in a while and we'd get things going. But my mom really showed me a lot of the basic steps and things to really get the good feel for the culinary arts. Of course, there were other people like Julia Child, there was also Justin Wilson, great Southern Louisiana, I guarantee, <laughs> kind of a chef. Love that man, love that man. Um, the Galloping Gourmet, Graham Kerr, he always had some interesting recipes as well. Those were the three that I really enjoyed. And then, of course, then you started getting Emeril Lagasse, then you had Paula Dean, Rachel Ray, Alton Brown. You had a whole slew of current people that are on cable right now, too, who have some just really fantastic shows as well. They all have their little niche as well. And so I pick and choose from a lot of people. I don't really, I don't really, ma I don't really mentor over somebody wholly. I just take what I like from each and kind of you make your own person. And I think that's really important. You don't want to be a clone of somebody else or of a niche. You kind of want to do your own thing. Kind of like what I try to do with this cooking show. It's definitely different than what you're going to see on cable, that's for sure. And hopefully it's something that you know everybody enjoys or people that watch it enjoy. But that's really my early influences and current influences of who I kind of shape and mold into what I do today. And so it really all boils back down to basics. You know, good food at a good price with a good quantity. Because that's what we're all really looking for. Okay, well I hope that answers your question, and if you out there have a question you'd like to ask either myself or one of the cast, please feel free to write us at crl at chefronlock.com. Once again, that's crl 
at chefronlock.com and in the subject heading just put mailbag and ask your question. And if you are one of the lucky ones that we pick your question, we'll read it on a future edition of Mailbag and answer it for you, just like we did here for Bonnie. All right, so get out there and do that right now, all right? I want to see you do it. Do it. Get off. Come on, let's go. <laughs> all right, that's, that's it. And we are going to go back right now to the Chef Ron Lock Show. Welcome back from the noisiest yard, this side of Uranus. Uranus, tomato, tomato, whatever you want to call it, but you got to agree. It's pretty noisy out there. It's pretty noisy out there. And you know what? I'm sure some of you out there who live in neighborhoods can totally relate to what I'm dealing with here. You know, you've got neighbors that have kids that just scream and scream, and you've got dogs that just bark and bark, and, and you've got people slamming things and people yelling and talking and everything else, and all you want to do is just go out and have a nice, relaxing barbecue, you know? And so you got to deal with all that. And I'm a peacemaker. I don't, I'm not one to sit and scream across the fence to shut up or anything like that. You know, it is what it is. I'll deal with it because that's just the way it is. Um, so, you know, I apologize if for some reason there was some interference between or behind what I was trying to explain here on the grilling segment of this episode outside because, like I said, I can only control so many things and you know, the rest is just mayhem, so from the noisiest neighborhood around, that's it, you know, I apologize. And it's Murphy's Law, I, I could go out there right now, I bet you, I could go out there right now, and I'll bet you that it would be quiet as a church mouse out there, seriously. If I go out there with a camera, it's like it's a parade. It's just Murphy's Law, it really is. So anyway, again, apologize for that. I'm hoping that you all got everything out of it that we did because it's a great recipe. Now, we're going to talk about our final presentation in just a second. But before I do that, I want to just go ahead and talk briefly about something else. And I was going to do this outside, but I decided to wait until I got in because it was just so noisy. I couldn't even concentrate, to be honest with you. I don't normally do product endorsements, and I normally don't sell something on my show here. In fact, I've never done that so far in this season. I won't do something unless I really, really believe in something. And I get a lot of people every week that send me samples or want to send things, and that's fine. And I don't make any promises. I'll say, look, I'll try it out. If it's something I really, really believe in, I'll include it in one of my shows. And you may see some of that in season two coming up in the next year. But at any rate, a friend of mine, Peter Wachtel, emailed me and said, hey, Chef Ron, I got this really cool tool that I think would really help in your barbecuing. And I said, all right. I said, send it on. And this little thing here, it's not really a thing, it's a tool, is called the Grill Wrangler. And this is such a cool, cool tool. Three reasons. Number one, it's got three purposes. Number one, you first see here, it's got this like fork here, you know, and you know, you can spear hot dogs or you can use it on your grill. Some people like to use a fork, some people don't, you know. But even if you don't like to use a fork, you can always like shoo them away, you know, shoot people away that are trying to get to your food, you know. <laughs> and so, I don't think I haven't done that before. And so, you know, and then what you do is there's a little handle, there's a little slide handle here. You just slide this open and look, it opens this up and it's all one piece here. It, it creates this big, big tong area here that's just wonderful for flipping chicken or fish or anything else that you have in the grill that needs flipping, right? Well then, you can go ahead slide this back up again, not all the way, maybe half the way, or you can just hold on to it too, and then you can use this as a spatula too to get your flip your burgers and fillets and stuff like that. It works so well, and when you're done, you just slide this back up, and you got your little weapon again, you know? But this is a great tool, really. It really is. Now you can find this at quirky.com, www.quirky.com or at Home Depot as well. I'll add the links into uh, the description of this of this segment here, of this episode, and you can find that. And um, it's a great tool. Check it out, you know? It's it's really a good thing. I'm, I'm pleased as punch about it. And like I said, I'm not getting paid for it or anything like that. So I just want to shout out to Peter and great invention great invention and uh, I hope, hope you do well with it. I've been, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. All right. Just trying to help you guys out with a little tool help information. All right. So let's get on with our 
final presentation and our wonderful barbecue bacon cheddar chicken breast that we've got here. Now, you see on this plate here, I reserved a little bit of the barbecue peach sauce that we did because I like to add a little bit more onto it when I bring it in and I'm ready to plate it. So that's what we did here. Maybe about, I don't know, probably four or five tablespoons of it on here. And you just dollop it on and it gives it that extra little oomph to it. You know, it just really does. You don't have to do that, but if you want to have a little extra sauce, reserve a little bit before you take the rest of it outside. And then you've got this to go ahead and put on at the final plating. This works real well. All right. I'm just smelling this and staring at this and it's been slaving over the grill all afternoon. I'm hungry and I'm going to eat. So let's go ahead and dig into this. Take a small piece here. I got my knife and fork here. I want to get a little piece of cheese along with all this as well. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay, this is going to take a second, folks. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. I'm trying to get everything on here is what I'm trying to do. All right. All right, let me see now. Let me get my napkin. This is going to be a mouthful. All right. Mmm. That little bit of barbecue sauce there. <laughs> it's certainly not a neat thing to eat, that's for sure. I'm going to tell you right now, perfectly done, first of all. Now, the first flavors I taste, and let's go ahead and show you this while I'm telling you about it. The first thing you taste is the barbecue sauce. Obviously, that's going to hit you right away. And then, what you're tasting next is you're tasting that cheese and the bacon. The bacon comes right in after that, and then your chicken kind of fills that all in in the end. Because your bacon and your cheddar cheese have those really good flavors. The sauce is just amazing. It's got a little bit of bite to it, you know, but not enough. And like I said, you can control that bite by the number of drops, as you saw how we were doing earlier in this episode. And I'm just telling you, it's just wonderful. It's, it's grilled to perfection. Uh, I, again, I do seven minutes, and I switch the angles to give a little bit of a, a little bit of a grill mark on each of them. Flip them over after that. You do another seven, and then flip it over or flip it again or turn it again, not flip it. All right, let's try this again. Seven minutes one way, seven minutes another way. Flip it. Seven minutes one way, and then seven minutes another way. On the final seven minutes, then you go ahead and put your your layering on. Well, you saw how we did that in the uh, middle of the episode here, anyway. So. I'm telling you, those flavors are just, I'm just, they're leaving me speechless. They're, they're just, they're just playing with my senses here. So anyway, and that and the outside too of all the craziness. But anyway, so we've had a great time today. We've had a lot of fun, you know, and you, if anything teaches you about life, it's about unexpected pleasures. Like I said, you never know what's going to happen outside when you go, you can't, you can control the inside. You can't control the outside and you just got to roll with it. And that's just how life is, you know. You just got to roll with the punches every day. But at any rate, we had a great time. I hope you did too. I want to thank Chuck again for popping in and uh, helping out a little bit here at the ingredient presentation. And I also want to thank each and every one of you out there for supporting this show. I say it every week, but I really sincerely mean it. Without you guys, there'd be no point in me doing this show. And I just really am excited that you are getting into this, that you are getting something out of it. I get to see pictures of the recipes that you're making and the smiles and kids and all kinds of great things that you're sending me and showing me. And I want to tell you how just tickled that makes me feel because I'm doing this for you guys, you know? So I'm glad that you're getting in there, you're getting in the kitchen, trying some new things and having some great experiences with your family, friends, and loved ones. That's what it's all about. All right, that's it. So. From the Chef Ron Locke Show, this is Chef Ron Locke saying, as I always do, get off that couch and get cooking, and we'll see you next time.